Are you thinking about adding temperature controls to your fermenters? Well, stick around and see how I convert two chest freezers into fermentation chambers using Inkberg controllers. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, consider subscribing. You'll get updates on brew days, brewery builds, product reviews, and more. Your support will help this channel grow. You might have seen in previous videos, I typically brew 10 gallon batches on my garage electric home brewery. I'm adding two new bucket fermenters so I can ferment two or more types of beer at the same time. In this video, I'm going to build two fermentation chambers so I can dial in the temperature of these two additional fermenters. Inkbird sent me two ITC 308 temperature controllers for free to review during this fermentation chamber build. These plug and play temperature controllers are a very popular option in the home brewing community when it comes to controlling fermentation temperatures. I have previous experience using Inkberg temperature controllers on my do-it-yourself glycol system. The ITC 1000 controllers used in this build offered all the same features I needed to precisely control glycol temperatures. Controlling fermentation temperatures is a very important part of the brewing process. Fermentation creates higher temperatures than ambient room temperature. Keeping yeast within a target temperature range will contribute to a better finished beer. You might be wondering, what is a fermentation chamber? A fermentation chamber is simply an enclosed box that helps maintain optimum fermentation temperatures. Fermentation chambers are a great solution for home brewers who are looking for a plug and play option, and they don't wanna deal with glycol systems that include glycol, heat exchangers, and pumps. And now for the build. This build will feature two Inkbird ITC 308 plug and play temperature controllers and two five cubic inch chest freezers. Together, they will control the fermentation temperatures of my two new bucket fermenters. The temperature controllers I'm using in this build have all the same features as the controllers I used on my glycol system. The main difference here is these controllers are completely plug and play. Let's take a closer look at these components. The Inkbird ITC 308 controllers make precise temperature control possible out of the box. These controllers will replace the thermostat in the freezers, allowing for a wider range of temperature control during fermentation. The Inkbird controllers come ready to install without any assembly. There is the main control box with a temperature display, buttons to adjust temperatures, a temperature probe, a power plug, and outlets that control both hot and cold elements. I'm just focusing on the coolant outlet for this video. However, this controller can also be used to heat up fermenters. And now for the freezers. I picked up two five cubic inch chest freezers for this build. Each freezer is big enough to hold one seven and a half gallon fermenter or really any fermentation vessel such as buckets and carboys. I'm building two smaller chambers instead of one larger one because I want the flexibility to experiment with different temperatures for each fermenter. A single chamber can only dial in one temperature at a time. Building these fermentation chambers was pretty straightforward. First, I mounted the Inkbird ITC 308 on the front of the freezer so I could easily monitor the temperature display. I used Velcro to attach each controller to the freezer. I then plugged in the Inkbird controller to an outlet. Then I plugged in the chest freezer into the cooling outlet on the ITC 308. For this video, I filled a fermenter with five gallons of warm water in order to simulate temperatures during fermentation and test the Inkbird and chest freezer's cooling ability. Finally, I placed the fermenter into the chest freezer and inserted the Inkbird temperature probe into the fermenter's thermal well in order to measure the fermenter temperatures. I could also tape the probe to the side of the fermenter if I did not have a thermal well on my fermenter. Now let's set up this Inkbird controller. All right, now that the ink bird and the freezer are turned on, let's go ahead and go over the menu settings of the ink bird. Currently the fermenter inside the freezer is at 95.8 degrees and the target temperature is set at 68 degrees. So the ink bird is going to be turning on the freezer until the temperature in the fermenter gets to 68 degrees. Let's go ahead and get into the menu setting of the ink bird by holding down the set button. The first setting is our target temperature. I can dial this up or down depending on the target temperature I am shooting for. The next is the heating differential. If I had a heating element turned on, 
in the inkbird, I can dial in the heating differential. Next is our cooling differential. So if it gets above three degrees from our target temperature, the inkbird will turn on the freezer to get it to that target temperature. There's a high alarm. So if it gets above the current setting of 100 degrees, an alarm will sound letting me know that there's something wrong with the fermenter. And there's a low alarm. So if it gets below 40 degrees, an alarm will sound. Next is a compressor delay. I currently have it set at five minutes. This will extend the life of the freezer from preventing the compressor from turning on and off too quickly. There's a calibration setting if I needed to fine tune the ink bird temperature sensor. And lastly, a Celsius and Fahrenheit setting. I'm going to keep it at Fahrenheit. And to get out of the ink bird, I'm just gonna hold down the set key. And now the ink bird is set to bring down the fermenter from 95.5 degrees down to 68 degrees. After I was done setting up the ink bird, I ran a cooling test to see how long it takes to bring down the fermenter temperature from 95.5 degrees to 68 degrees. At one hour and seven minutes, the fermentation chamber dropped the fermenter temperatures to 88.8 .8 degrees. At two hours and 24 minutes, the fermenter temperature dropped to 81.9 degrees. I stepped away for eight hours and 59 minutes, and when I returned, the ink bird controller dialed the freezer to hit and maintain the target temperature of 68 degrees. From my calculations, this fermenter chamber dropped temperatures at a rate of roughly 6.2 degrees an hour. And finally, to wrap up this build, I built a cart from the freezer's packing material and caster wheels left over from another brewery build. Adding wheels to each fermenter chamber is really gonna help moving these freezers around the garage. I think these fermentation chambers are going to make a great addition to my home brewery, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it compares to my do-it-yourself glycol system. I plan on posting a comparison video in the future. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more homebrewing content like this in the future. See you next time. Cheers.